guys. So today we are going to be shaping our boundary. Right now, we are not going to name this position, place, anything like that. Today, all I want is for the dog to be comfortable with getting on the boundary and um, staying on the boundary. So I am going to call Mukasa over. I am using treats. I am outside. I would clearly. I would not recommend you starting this outside. However, this is building another layer for Mufasa, so hopefully it'll be just a little bit more difficult and you can see kind of what you might expect or get when you do this inside your house. Mufasa. So I'm gonna call Mufasa over. I'm not going to cue anything. I'm just going to see what I get. Yes. Now the biggest, biggest thing you will find to get success with the boundary is if you feed the bed. You'll notice I will never feed Mufasa's mouth. I will always feed the bed. Free. And then I will also free him off once he is on the once he is on the boundary so that I can reset the game. The idea is to reward approximations. So free. what does Mike look like with your dog? Yes. Is to yes and treat when they are looking at the bed, if they put one foot on the bed, if they put two feet on the bed, if they even sniff the bed. Little tiny approximations to get towards the end goal, which is right here, um, them being on the boundary. I also am not rewarding my free. So I want the boundary to be more rewarding than coming off of it. Therefore, I will encourage them to get off. If, I'm, if I get a dog who is stuck on this boundary and will not come off, that is the only time I will reward for getting off. Another thing that I will do is I will put all of my energy, my whole body language, I will scare all of the energy into this bed. I will not look at anything else, only the bed. Yes. Now, if my dog gives some type of um, attempt to try and figure out what I want, such as sitting or laying down off of the boundary, I will help them out. So at that point, I might lure them or, um, you know, walk closer to the boundary. Free. Yes. So if I'm starting out back there, back here, and my dog is here and He's probably going to sit, and I'm putting all of my energy into the bed, but he sat, I would come closer and then still continue to put all of my energy to help them out just a little bit. Free. As you can see, I'm starting to build some distance. Yes, good boy. With shaping with Boston's boundary. And that's kind of what I'm looking for when um, I want to be able to send him to his, his boundary eventually. So if I have a reliable ping pony back and forth, this is kind of when I'm okay to start naming the boundary. And for your release word, you can either use okay, free, or their name. If you have a multi-dog household, I would highly suggest using their name. The worst thing that has ever happened to me, which is a lie, but um, one of the hardest things is when you only want one dog to come off their boundary and then all of a sudden you're bombarded with four dogs. So how I 
do this is I'll call him off. Picasso, again, no reward for coming off. Fine. I'll give my cue and then I will wait them out. Again, I'm going to be putting all of my energy into the bed. My, my um, body language, my gaze, all of it is going into the bed. And if, if they struggle, then I'm just going to help them out and move closer. Ideally, I will not lure them onto the bed unless they are fearful of it. If they are fearful of it, you're not ready for a cue. And you should be going if back a step and just go back to the beginning of this video where we were just rewarding for them getting on. No naming, no anything. Then I'm going to go on the end, pass up.